Hi, I'm John Totoro, and I'm coming up next on Extreme Close-Up. John Turturro is one of the most eclectic actors of his generation. You've probably seen him in a Spike Lee movie. He was the hot-headed pizza maker in Do the Right Thing and the sensitive shopkeeper in Jungle Fever. Or you might recognize him from his diverse roles in films by Joel and Ethan Cohen, the sniveling gangster in Miller's Crossing, and of course he played the title role in Barton Fink. Now Turturro co-wrote, directed, and stars in his latest movie, which is close to his heart. He's been working on it since 1980. It's called Mac. He plays the title character, the last of a dying breed of craftsmen who are passionate about their work. The character is inspired by John's father, who was a carpenter and a house builder. What are we going to do now? I mean, we got to get in a better predicament. I love it, Bill Lovettown. Lazar, the Milstein brothers. Yeah, but those guys got money. They had money. Money. He didn't got no money. Guys didn't have money. They made money. Rome wasn't built in a day. Two brothers and a sheep. A sea wolf. Whatever. The two brothers, they saw the seven hills. They said, let's go. We built here. And from there, they took over the world. You might say Mac is a labor of love about the love of labor. And we've got John Turturro right here to talk about your new movie, Mac. Before we get started, though, John, we brought you a little surprise that we hope you might like. We're not going to let you open it just now. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether this is a familiar looking box. We're going to call this the Barton Fink Mystery Box. Okay. Okay. And anybody who's seen Barton Fink, and I highly uh, recommend the film, will know exactly what we're talking about. We'll just kind of let that rest here for okay. a moment and let people wonder what's in this box. And uh, we promise you we'll let you open it if you do a good job uh, with the questions. Okay. Right. okay. Okay. Let's talk about Mac. This is a, a film uh, inspired by your dad. And your dad passed away in 1988, mm -hmm. two years ago. What would he have thought about this film? Well, I really can't answer that question. I, I would hope that he would have seen uh, some of himself in it. Mm -hmm. I guess he would have been in it. So, I mean, he is in it anyway in, uh, in, in many different ways. Uh, but uh, he would have been in it uh, also. So uh, right. he probably would have been watching his own performance. <laughs> I hope he's... You know, it's it's done out of affection and with honesty. I, I didn't try to make a set out to make a tribute to my father or anything like that. I tried to tell a story about uh, his life, which I think is indicative of many people's life lives who came from different places, right. and tried to uh, create their own world, leaving their own world behind, and uh, they had to be their own role models in a way, mm -hmm. and. I think what they created and what they put out was almost tangible proof of their worth. And that's why many of the people who came to this country from different, well, you know, from many different countries, it was, it's very hard, it was hard for them to compromise certain mm -hmm. things because they were trying to, because that would prove, give them a feeling of worth in a new country with lack of, they, they didn't speak the language, they didn't have the education, uh, didn't have the money. So uh, it's a story told, you know, with affection about a group of people that I've never seen portrayed. So I, I hope he, he'd be smiling. Mm -hmm. What have you inherited from your father? Obviously an approach. I mean, my father uh, was somewhat successful for a while, and then he, then he wasn't. But money wasn't everything to him. It was doing his work a certain way, uh, make, giving it to people, and, and knowing that they were happy with it for years, that it would last that every detail, you know, his meticulousness, specificity. Uh, and he was the first, one of the first guys there, last guy to leave. He loved what he did. And that really defined who he was. I mean, you can't do that at the expense of your whole life. I think he realized that later on, that he missed some of us growing up and stuff like that. And then he realized it was my younger brother that he spent more time with him when he was younger. But, you know, he, his story, many people have had this story, they struggle to, to make a mark for themselves here with their family. And sometimes the family business worked, and many times it didn't. Sometimes there's another family outside of your family. And that's the film touches on that also. Now this film for you was a family affair. You got your wife, your mom, your kid. 
your brother, my some best of your friend, best friend, all involved in this. What was yeah. it like directing all these people? Well, they were the best people for. I mean, the big parts, the best people for the roles, were people who were the best for them and understood the world. Many of the people have experience in this world, the world of building, uh, and it's a world that's very physical, and where people really go up against each other, and they furiously sometimes argue about things as minute as buying who's going to buy each other the egg sandwich you know what I mean <laughs> uh, uh, so I had to have the right people to make it authentic I want I wanted to feel to be very very authentic and I thought the humor would come from that and then also you know it was up to us to find the metaphor of each particular incident you know and, and how and how much we would show of whatever so all the people for me were the best people for the roles and uh, it's the film is about people that I really I care about, and I did it with people that I really care about, and uh, so there was no, you know that was that was pretty easy most of the time. Uh, you know, with my wife sometimes you have to make sure that you know she knows I'm the director and she's the actress. And <laughs> I can be a little sticky, you know. If you if you go home and you say, well, you now you know I'm the boss, and the, you don't want to announce that and. We just I had to be able to separate myself a little bit from that. And once I was able to, uh, I it wasn't any problem. John, I'm going to read you a quote here from Newsweek magazine. They once said, what Meryl Streep is to accents, John Turturro is to hair. And we're going to find out what they mean by that when Extreme Close-Up returns. Don't go away. Welcome back to Extreme Close-Up, E's Half Hour Interview Show with John Turturro. Let me ask you this. What's the most humiliating audition you ever went on? Humiliating audition? Well, I've been cut off like in 30 seconds, you're reading. Uh, having like a whole committee of people sitting around you and looking at you and stuff like that. Uh, I'm trying to think what was the most humiliating. One time I, I was auditioning for a film and the guy said he'd be right back. You know, I was reading, I was almost reading like the whole script with him, a, a director, a writer, uh, and uh, he said he'd be right back. And he never came back for three hours. Huh. And I was sitting in his office and he went to the racetrack, he was a gambler. <laughs> and he came back. And, and you were cooling your heels that whole time. Yeah, and I came back, I said, well, what the hell happened over here? And he said, you know, oh, I'm sorry, he brought all his friends back with him. And then we continued to read, I was like, you know, it was bizarre. Did you get the part? No. No. They, uh, he kept telling me I was the best person by far, but I would never be cast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, aud auditions in general are a, basically a failure, I think, as a way to get to know someone. And I don't think there are actors who audition well. And there are actors, their audition is just the tip of the iceberg. And, and the situations where I've blossomed the most is when people have written things for me that they hadn't seen me do, and said, so let's see John try to do this. And knowing that, that someone had the confidence to do that is, uh, is a great, uh, you just 